the name of my podcast is the uh, the Unchained Podcast. Um, nice. You know, I'm just going to introduce myself. I'm going to introduce you. So for the audience to hear, my name is Alexander Barney. I'm the host of the Un- Unchained Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been a while. It's been it's been a bit. Yeah, man. I remember we did some work in the past, man, and you just always were about people, man. And I remember that. I, I recall that. So I know that you're actually a real soul on the ground with your boots on the ground. You know, protesting and really standing up for the people because you've helped me out in many scenarios. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And this one too was wild because it was, I mean, you know where I live. You, 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 we recorded those projects back in the day too as well. Um, it was just right outside every day. You just like, you go outside and everything's going on. So it was like front yard kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk more about your, uh, let's talk more about some of the work you've done, like your businesses. Like I, I, the reason why I wanted to have you on this, this podcast and get some ideas from you is because you're always looking, you know, to, to start the next, you know, big company, you know, and, Definitely. You got a few successful, few successful adventures. Uh, uh, what, what, are you, what are you doing now as far as, I mean, I know you see your podcasting. What's yeah. the name of your podcast? Well, thanks. No, yeah, I don't have a podcast. Um, I, uh-huh. I do, I do everything but that. <laughs> but uh, I love going on your podcast. So that's that's I'm totally down for that. Um, but yeah, yeah. The main thing that like most people know me as and stuff like that is Promo Affiliates, which is the marketing company. Um, just to kind of brief condense the storyline with that was um, I used to be like a busser, you know, bartender, promoter. I was just doing anything to make money, basically like everybody else. Um, but then uh, I started becoming a promoter and this company at the time was, was, it was called Uber and it was, it was just, it was new and it was coming from San Francisco just to LA. And, um, and I got the amazing opportunity to pr- promote for them on the basis of per new user, you know, so they were paying out per new user. And um, I, I just started putting the, the Uber code on like club, uh, an event, you know, uh, flyers and stuff and started racking up tons and tons of new users. And then them, and then like I did the same, the same technique with Postmates and I started getting like tens of thousands of credits, you know, and then I got the opportunity to promote for them for cash instead. Cause they're like, what are you doing? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's keep, let's keep doing this, but you know, on a different level. So yeah, it was, that was, that was such a blessing. And that's how I started a company, you know, cause I, I didn't know what really, I mean, I've, I've worked with companies before, but I didn't really know what, like, what to, like, you know, how to, like, actually do one on my own, but this provided the opportunity, I would say, to, like, basically, you know, do it, whatever you need to do, you know, obviously, you know, we learn as we go, but then I can involve all my friends, and that's how, you know, uh, I met Sean, and, you know, we involved him, too, as well, and we all just started just doing whatever we could to get new users, and we learned about, like, at the time, I didn't know about any of this stuff, I didn't know about SEO, I didn't know about digital marketing, you know, but you learn it quick, you know, influencer marketing, you learn all that stuff quick when you start getting paid for any user and finding new ways to market, you know, so that's, that's the rest is history. That's, that's like my main thing. That's, that's, uh, you could check that out and Google that. That's promo affiliates, Aaron loop. We got from just Uber clients wise from there. We got them Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, Drizzly, Saucy, just everything. So it was, it's been a good, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good solid couple of years. And then, you know, we, we did pretty much our job. So things kind of declined since then, you know, cause um, we've, you know, who, who doesn't have Uber now, you know? So it's kind of a little bit tough to keep getting new users. But um, after the situation happened, this 2020, like the entire year is pretty much a situation, right? Um, think, yeah. <laughs> things, things changed. And, um, and a lot of people that were not really even interested in downloading apps had no choice. And, they, and it was a demand, you know, people needed, you know, things delivered, they needed food, they needed alcohol. So we started like marketing new ways to even boomers now, which is something that wasn't really a thing that was a big deal at the time. So yeah, the company started ramping up again. So. That's been mo- most of my focus, like the past, this recent time, like I, I was kind of like not expecting this, you know? So it was kind of like, took over my life again, but here we are, right? <laughs> wow, so for you, the economy is actually working in your favor because you are, you do a lot of online businesses. Correct, I'm like the only person here in the world right now that's still like making some money. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> would, you, would you say business is better? Uh, uh, since the since the since the, the, the coronavirus and uh, various pro- businesses still better for you? Is it like better for you? Than- for the world, business is not better. For, for, for me, the, I'm the one person I think business is better for. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. So you really, you really lucked out. I mean, no, I did. I, I really did. And, and that's why, yeah, it's just, it's just, but it's, it's a different world, you know. Um, we, you know, over the years, we've made 
you know, hundreds of thousands of ads, you know, different um, influencer campaigns and stuff. And, and that is, it's, it's, it is 2000, it's a different slate. Like none of those ads would work and nothing, nothing is the same anymore because, you know, either it's either insensitive, right? If you're making a funny joke about like Mad Men or you're, or you're like, Hey, you know, come home and, you know, get a drink with your buddy and, and watch some TV or something like all, everything's different because it's just like everyone is not interested in that when they want they just want food you know they're like we don't need any like catchy phrases or anything in ads anymore we just want to know like where can we get an app where can we get food delivered so everything is very quick and urgent people thought things were quick and urgent like earlier like yeah it, it was you know like everyone makes fun of millennials and gen z for having a, a small attention span but now it's like even more you know so yeah yeah everything's urgent now so you know yeah 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 <laughs> It is. It is. I had people, even on Facebook, like some of my friends and stuff. Their their parents or grandmas. I was getting. I'm not. This is not a joke. I'm getting DMs. You know, like, hey, I heard you. I need help. Can you help me download? There. I need to figure out how to get groceries. And like, I just felt like I was like, what is going on? You know, like, you know, it was it was kind of a wild experience because people I haven't talked to in you know even over a decade. You know, and I was just old. The older they are, the more help they need to understand things. But yeah, it's. Yeah, it was it was it it was it was pretty wild. Yeah, it's 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 an insane insane thing going on. <laughs> oh, wow, those are your businesses. So, what are some? So, do you advise like everybody? You think the economy is going to shift in a way where we're all just going to have like now it's going to be the way it is? Like, conveniency, you know, Amazon, your business, <laughs> promo affiliate, post mode. It, it's was that, that how? Yeah, is that how like uh. Like business, like business plans and business ideas should, should shift in that way. Well, it, it's 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 I, my personal. I don't know everything, right? But my personal. I'm just reacting in this world. But but my personal opinion and and based on history is it's a yes and no in the sense of yes, like things are changing, you know. But no, this is like the biggest opportunity for everybody right now. Um, it's I don't know if you notice if you go back through time, but like every major multi-million or billionaire com like com companies are started in times of panic and recession um, of, of of hard things because it's everyone needed to learn to evolve. You know, like when when the plague was going on and and, and now like you know those are harsh. There's I mean obviously what we're going through now is really tough and it's a it's a for us it's like one of the biggest things you know, but before you know the people it was a lot worse people were there was you know massive terrible things that happened in the past you know there's and 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 what people have done is they've learned to evolve and adapt and that's how um innovation is created and that's how people right now that are maybe if they're lost or if they're struggling and they're looking they don't know what to do um this is the time this is their time actually this is their time to create new things do uh you know, do something that they never thought. Maybe if they have some free time and they, you know, have an idea or a dream they want to work on, like this is the time, like right now, because the world needs them. Like the world needs, you know, you, you know, if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't know what to do, like right now, like you, you don't have to worry about it because the world is ready for you to help us. You know, like, like I said, like people, like the Uber thing, like it was weird when I first started off because I was like, like this is weird, man. Like, what are the the things that we learned when we were a kid? Right. Like, don't talk to strangers, you know, don't get in cars with strangers, you know, don't don't take food from strangers. Right. <laughs> those are like the first three things you learn. And like those are like the biggest companies right now, you know. So it's like, you know, it's I don't know how to like, you, you know what I mean? So it's yeah, like you have to like see the world is and you have to, it's tough. You know, like if you like, you know, back in the day, if you own horses and you own like a horse stable and you're like, man, what's going on? But like, don't worry, it's OK, you know keep doing your horses, but also work on cars, you know, like the, the next step is going to happen and you can be a part of it, you know, or you could just be upset about it, you know? Yeah. So innovation is going to happen no matter what AI is taking over. Yes. Automation is taking over. Yes. We really got to learn how to adapt to those things. Yes. I get it. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. They, yeah. That, I mean, that, that really just, you know, brings light to, uh, you know, just me just getting more involved in, you know, just being creative and, biotechnology and technology in general, man. Yeah, I've seen you've been doing a lot of stuff, man. I've been seeing you working with yeah, uh, Sean's thing, and I even saw the video you guys did too recently. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, man. Like, I feel like businesses like his and like yours, man, are really taking off during these times. Like, 
even like this uh there's all there's, there's, there's also this, this company i used to be a part of named ACN, man. yeah and uh but stuff like this like they also they sell they uh they like they like the middleman between uh services they nice. help you set up like your, your tv and your cable and your wi-fi and they take like a little a little cut of that but it's even like like this is like that man, man that you can do from home Yes, yes, yes. That's huge. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, man. Like, I mean, I really just want to focus on, like, just innovation, man. Like you said, like, you know, we had horses, but we still got to focus on the cars. So, yes. Yeah, we got all, we got all these things we got to do. We got the Amazon, you know, deliveries. We got Instacart now. But, but what's the next step, like? Teleportation. Yes. Exactly. That's the way we need to start thinking. I feel like. Yes. We need to wake up. Yeah. You know, we need to get that um, No, you're right. Also an activist. Tell me about some of your experiences. Uh, I, I know you've been uh, protesting. Tell me some of your experiences on the ground. Uh, what do you, What do you? How do you feel about like you know Black Lives Matter? Um, I know it has a lot of, um, it's, it's suffering a lot of uh, backlash from the organization, but the sentiment is something that we all get behind. Uh, do you feel like there's something going, like the tension between the sentiment and the organization, or uh, what do you represent with it? Uh, what, what I represent is, is I'm always learning, right? I, uh, just like, just like with my business, you know, I had no idea that this was going to happen. So my job is to try to react quick as possible, but also most effectively as possible, right? I need to make sure I personally help as many people as quick as I can. And that's why, to be honest, right when things went down, I, I was so busy with my company. I didn't know what was going on. I literally got hit with reality when I walked out my door and there's just like thousands of people, right? So I didn't know what was going on and I had to figure out fast, right? And, and yeah. the, the only thing I could think, and I'm, I've learned a lot o over time now, because you know that this has been a, a long situation, but what I saw at the situation was a couple girls and, the, and her friends, they were passing out waters and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but they're helping. I know that's a good way to help. So I was really inspired by them. And so that's what I did. I, I bought a bunch of, cause I'm a, I'm a huge, you know, quantity freak and I go to Kirkland and I buy a bunch of stuff, Costco, you know, I'm a nerd and I have a ton of water and mask and I was like, you know, forget it. So I just, I grabbed all that stuff and I went out and I just said, who, who like, cause I know people were dehydrating and there was a lot of bad stuff going on. People were getting hurt. And I was like, maybe I have some medical supplies and I had masks and I had water and I was just passing it out to everybody, you know? I passed it out to all the protesters, you know, all, I mean, no cops or soldiers wanted my water, understandably, but I offered it to them, you know? You know, they're like, they're like, thank you, man, but no, like, and I said, I, I understand, but if you need anything like masks or anything, you know, let me know. And so I just did that every single day just to make sure. And as I was out there, like I was talking to people and they, everyone taught me what was going on and I learned a lot about it. And yeah, it's, it's, a, lot, it's, it's a lot of wild stuff and like, I mean, I can't obviously understand a lot of things that people are going through, you know, because, you know, I'm obviously in my own bubble trying to, you know, work on companies, do my thing and that. So, like, I spend all my time doing that. And I'm, I'm, don't go, I'm kind of a loner. I don't really go outside much, so I don't experience too much of the outside world, unfortunately. But I do know that it, it's something that is, I guess, an obvious effect of, a, you know, a lot of things. And I think you're asking specifically about, you know, the BLM and Black Lives Matter. And I think, I think, I mean, obviously it's a reaction, right? This is not something that someone just created for fun and just like, you know, it, it's like this was a reaction to something that's going on. And I think what it is, and I don't know everything, but I think it's just the overall, I think everyone's really upset with the government, you know? It's, it's they're really upset about the way things are. You know, I, the, the, obviously the two names that were being shouted out every single day, you know, everybody knows. And I looked up those situations and yeah, they were just extreme. They were just totally like uh, uncalled for. And it's just, and it's over things that didn't make any sense, you know? Like, I think that the government's there obviously for a reason, you know, we need the government, but I think we need less involvement. I don't think we should be running down hunting people for things that don't matter, you know, like, I mean, yes, I understand, you know, I don't know, I guess I heard the first situation was over uh, a potentially alleged fake, fake $20 bill, like, that's crazy, like, that's insane, you know, like, why are we, like, why are we, like, that, why are we just literally murdering people over $20, like, I've lost, unfortunately, a lot of money in my life, but I would never want that to happen to anybody, like, that's crazy, so I think, yeah, that, 
Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, obviously, I know you might have a lot more to say about all this, but that and then the other th situation where people just literally marched in and then just like somebody was sleeping and, and then they got murdered. And I think those two things, I mean, there's a lot of things that were, I mean, missing, right? There's, there's a huge scale of things that are going on that the whole thing is about. But those two things that I've been educated on, people have told me about the situation. And not only that, but I've looked things up. Obviously, there's too much involvement with the government, and, and they need to adjust, or they need to they need to they need to go back. You know, they need to like there needs to be less involvement because if there's things can be a lot handled a lot easier on a situation that is not too extreme like that. And 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 so yeah, a lot of people are upset. There's people that are uh, happy about it and upset about it. But all all I know is that I think the best thing to do, and and I could be wrong again, is the government. You know, we need to figure out what we can do with through the government to make things different. Because, long story short, like when I was in high school, I got in, involved. I was like totally, you know, me doing videos all the time. And there's this there's this thing called Invisible Children. It was a protest. We heard about this in, in Africa. People were getting kidnapped, and and they were putting being forced into armies, you know, and and so. And there's this this group that I got involved with called Invisible Children. They wanted to bring awareness. You know, they're like, hey, we need to get money or awareness. We need to stop this. Which, I mean, I I don't know who would think that was not a good cause. You know, right? I'm like, this is a solid cause. Like, we do need to stop people getting kidnapped and put in forced into armies at a young age, when was happening in Uganda and Africa. And so I go out there, I got my camera, I recorded everybody and their interviews and their reactions, and you can see it's on my YouTube video. This is like 10 years ago, and everybody... Africa? No, 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 no. This was the protest that we had in San Francisco for oh, Africa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was too broke to go to Africa when I was in high school. <laughs> I was just saying, man, yeah, you, you were just killing it back then. Take a trip into Africa. Yeah, no, I, I wish. But the but the long story short is when I interviewed everybody, you'll see the footage. Everybody was saying, and they're all young. They say we want to spread awareness to the government. That was their mission. Because you know we were staying out there for like a couple days, trying to like live off just crackers and water, like they were doing in Uganda. But then at the end of the protest, they projected uh, Barbara Bush and all the government. You know, um, they were talking, "Hey, we're so happy for you guys. Good job." And then I realized, I'm like, oh man, like this, we're totally wasting our time. Like, you know, we, the government already knows. And I was like, we have to ourselves create a solution for this. You know, we can't just expect other people to do it. And we can't expect uh, the government to do it. We have to figure it out. So that's when I learned quick about we have to figure out what specifically we need to make, get changed and then focus on that and change it because we don't want to keep doing this. This is not some this is not fun for anybody. So I mean, you know, that's my personal opinion. I mean I don't know what you think on this, but that's my personal opinion. Yeah. I definitely think like, you know, we live in a shared humanity and, you know, it's real out here, you know, one group of people are suffering. Like, you know, me and you are friends. Yes. We're cool, you know. But we have no problems because you never get some racist know some racist crap to me I, I think that you're honest you know you're an honest individual and you play play you know play out of love everything you do is out of love and out of good intention and goodwill and i try to re reflect that to people who are like that with me and uh, but you know this is an issue for me you know i've actually been profiled before in my life oh wow uh, back when i was like 20, yeah back when i was like 21 i was actually uh I was going to tell you, I was actually a, 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 a waiter and a bartender, too. And I was coming from this restaurant in Westwood. And I was wearing a suit and tie because some of the restaurants you have to wear a suit and tie. Or you have to wear a tie. And I was wearing a tie. And I was in a jacket. You have to wear a tie. And I was wearing my tie. And I just got off of work. And it was like probably around midnight. It was like it had to be around midnight or like 1 a.m. But I was walking across the street across uh, Santa Monica Boulevard onto Westwood. And, uh, man, there was these two squad cars. Like the lights off, bro. Just like I just knew something was up, bro. Like wow. lights off, two cop cars, just across, right there at the, at the uh, across the street. And I'm just like, man, I don't want to cross the street right now. But as soon as I started across the street, bro, they turn the lights on, they start charging at me with the car. They do like a 180 with the car, out with the pistol drawn, like just like get on the fucking ground. I'm just like, bro, I'm like, bro, what is going on? Like, I'm I just got my work, bro. Like I'm wearing a tie, like professional look. Like, this can't be, like, did I mess up with my taxes type of thing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you know, the taxes, bro? Like, wow. And it's like, you, you, read the, you read the description of somebody just coming to arm army in the neighborhood. And I'm just like, bro, I'm wearing a tie, bro. Like, <laughs> my, I'm, I'm running around with Al Capone, you know, the 1920s with a tie gun in the tie. Like, <laughs> I'm doing that now. Like, 
This is an American gangster. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah, bro. Like, I was like, I was like, okay, this is kind of real. And I was like, it does happen. So, like, as a young black individual, we are already, like, you know, our, you know, our parents and our families and the culture kind of pressed us for this type of thing. Like, yeah, black people are more likely to just stop on the cops. So you got to be prepared. You know, so I was already like, I kind of shrugged it off at that time. Yes. You know, after the Trayvon Martin was still a thing back then. I was like, okay, this thing happens, but, you know, it's not like as crazy as they say it is. And then when all these murders down the line started happening, it started clicking with me like, man, this stuff is real. I could have been one of those individuals had I made a wrong move. Like, I was carrying up no four at that time. Yes. You know, back then, no fours were huge, bro. A black no four. Yeah. They they could have definitely like misinterpreted that guy and shot me. Wow. But I chucked it, bro, and I, I broke my screen. So it was like, it was real, bro. But anyway, wow. they, they found out they were 